welcome to the channel. Today we've got a Mopar Performance 360 crate mower, a carbureted version. We're going to compare stock exhaust manifolds to long tube headers. But guess what? There are two different kinds of stock exhaust manifolds. Let's take a look. In this video, we're going to compare the early 92 to 93 stock exhaust manifolds with larger exits to the later versions and then compare both of those to long tube headers. And here's the cool thing. We're going to take both a look at power and what happens to the tune when you make changes to the exhaust on a carbureted 360 crate motor. Let's get going. Stock exhaust manifolds, let's make some noise. Tube headers. Let's make some noise. To get things started in our video, we wanted to compare the larger opening, larger exhaust, stock exhaust manifolds on the 92 to 93 360 Magnums to the later version, which was a smaller exhaust manifold, and then also to long tube headers. In order to do that, we ran not a junkyard motor as we have in the past, but we actually ran a 360 Dodge Magnum crate motor from Mopar Performance. But even though it has the fancy title, basically it's a stock production line motor with a stock camshaft, stock head, stock bottom end. The only thing that's changed in the motor, or the significant change, is the addition of the Mopar Performance M1 dual plane intake manifold. And to that, for this test, we added a 750 brawler carburetor ran all three of the different exhaust manifolds and obviously this thing had an MSD distributor to work in carbureted form. And the motor worked great. It hadn't been run before this test in probably, we're thinking between 13 and 14 years. <laughs> so it's been sitting for a long time. But after we put it together and put the carburetor on and put the distributor in, it, it, it thing fired right up and it worked great. So here is the, here's what happened when we first ran this motor with the later smaller stock exhaust manifolds, equipped with those manifolds, and then basically sections of exhaust. Now the exhausts were a minimum of two and a half, and actually they went into three inch exhaust. So the and the flanges that we used, or the connector pipe, the exhaust pipe was actually designed for the larger manifold. So the exhaust section kind of aided the larger manifolds um, because the smaller manifolds would have come with also smaller exhaust sections, uh, smaller down pipes basically, and probably a smaller exhaust as well. So we ran this in this configuration and run with the smaller stock exhaust manifolds. The Magnum produced, the carbureted Magnum produced 291 horsepower and 300 and essentially 90 foot-pounds, 89.8. And you can see that the torque curve was fairly flat up here. We started our pull at 2,800 RPM, ran it out to 5,400 RPM, and you can see that's well past the power peak. The power peak is at about 45 or 4,600, and the torque is fairly consistent here in this range, but at about 3,300 is kind of where we're looking at the 390 foot-pound range. 
So here's what happened when we swapped out the smaller stock exhaust manifolds to the larger ones. We did indeed pick up power. So the larger exhaust, the extra flow offered by the larger opening and the outlet side of that exhaust manifold, and maybe there are changes internally as well on the exhaust manifold. We didn't measure it, but obviously the outlet increased the flow rate. We're not talking about a lot. We're talking about a maximum of about four or five horsepower. Peak torque was up to 394 foot-pounds. Peak power was up to 294. And that's why I show you the curve so that you can see the differences here in the, in the different ranges. Really, you know, three or four horsepower might be splitting hairs and we might see more of a power gain as we go up in, like if we were to put a camshaft in this, but ported heads and those kinds of things. Um, you can, uh, you can gain more power possibly with these stock exhaust manifolds. But obviously the real gain came when we added long tube headers. The gains were bigger. Torque was up over 400 foot-pounds of torque, 403. Peak horsepower was up to 301. And again, not huge changes in power offered by the long tube headers compared to the stock exhaust manifolds on this mild application. But the thing that I really want to show you, and, and, and more importantly even than these power gains, is the change in the tune with this carburetor offered by these different manifolds and the long tube headers. So let's check it out. So maybe the coolest part about this test on the stock exhaust manifolds, the different sizes from the different years and the long tube headers, is not so much the power that we gain because that wasn't substantial on a very mild motor like this. But the really cool thing is the effect that it had on the air fuel curve during the run. So we take a look at the here is the smaller of the two stock exhaust manifolds. You can see it started out fairly rich. 10.8 or so, and then at the top of the RPM range, uh, leaned out to about 12.3. And the problem with this kind of setup is that it's very difficult to do any more tuning. I know everyone's thinking, hey, that's less than 11 to one. There's gotta be power to be had down low, but it's very hard with the carburetor to change the fueling needs at wide open throttle at 3000 RPM and not also have it affect the air fuel at 5,500 RPM. So we could lean this out a little bit and we might pick up a little bit more power down below. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. I've seen these things run rich and when we've taken fuel away, it doesn't really add any power. But the interesting thing is not so much the shape of the air fuel curve with this carburetor and this combination. Take a look at what happened when we added the larger manifold we got a change in the air fuel curve. We got it now. We got a little bit of a change in power, but it doesn't correlate with the change in air fuel. So we got more power, um, or more. We have a leaner mixture at the top of the RPM range with the bigger manifolds, leaned out to as as lean as 12.9, which is still plenty safe. Started out the same down at the 3,000 RPM range but then they diverged uh, about at 3,700 RPM. So it's interesting that the, there was a change in the air fuel curve. Obviously this means that there's a change in signal to the carburetor, which is kind of cool. And while this is a little bit of a change between the two, um, and I'm surprised that it changed this much given the shape and size of the, the uh, manifolds are the same, all, all that we changed really I think is the opening. Now there might be a change internally too, but it's not gonna be dramatic. But here's the big change. Here's what happened when we put the long tube headers on. So don't just look at the air fuel numbers because that's really not as important. But look what it did to the curve. So it basically flattened the whole curve out, which is exactly what you would want. I mean, ideally with a carbureted application at wide open throttle, you would want the air fuel to be the same at 2,500 RPM or 3,000 RPM as it is at 5,500 or 6,000 RPM. And the reason for that is it makes it easier to adjust. So if it's too rich and you want to take away fuel and the air fuel curve is nice and flat, you can just change the jetting and change the whole curve. And if it's flat, it's going to change it everywhere, which would be probably what you want. And that's the nice thing about actually in this situation, having the long tube headers on it worked better on this carbureted combination in terms of having a nice flat kind of relatively even air fuel curve. You can see on the others with the stock exhaust manifolds, we had kind of a 
<laughs> I would call a rising airfield curve where it leans out toward the top. And the header was nice and flat, so we were able to adjust that with jetting. And as I'm sure people will want to know, the jetting that's in the carburetor right now is 73 squared, both front and back. And what I probably would do is, you know, if we wanted to try to wiggle around and play with power a little bit on the, on the combination with the long tube headers, we might try taking a few jet sizes out to see how it responds. Although when we did this with the, uh, I have another video coming up on carb spacers that we tried on this, um, a four hole spacer versus open spacer. And we saw a dr again, a dramatic change in the air fuel shift. It's interesting that having the thing be leaner really didn't show too much more power. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay guys, what did we learn from our little comparison between the two different stock exhaust manifolds and the long tube headers on our 360 Magnum motor? Well, we learned, first of all, there are two different style stock exhaust manifolds. One has a bigger opening, and as the dyno showed, it's worth a little bit of extra power. And I honestly think that the gains from the stock exhaust manifold swap would be even greater if we had more motor, if we had ported heads and had a camshaft in it. I think the gains might be even more. But the very cool thing is the change in air fuel the change in the tune offered by the change in the exhaust, especially the long tube headers. That's all that fancy scavenging effect from the long tubes having an effect on the carburetor. Our Mr. Holder, make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff, more magnum testing and every kind of testing coming up.